We are here today on a review hearing. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. Uh, we are live streaming, and Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Pamela Ferguson, Regional Attorney representing the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present and ready with Permanency Specialist Isabel Chacon and Supervisor Dakota Miller, both from St. Francis Ministries. Stacey Brown, on behalf of the mother, Jocelyn Lopez, my client's present, we're ready. Ms. Shaw. Monica Olivas with CASA, present. Jim Shaw, representing the father. Yolanda Evelyn Ed Lottom for the child. All right, thank you. Okay, what do we have new uh, since the court report was filed? Okay, so I did send Jocelyn in to get a drug screen. Uh, it was negative. And she has been having issues, technical difficulties with getting her counseling done. Uh, when I did speak to the counselor, Holly, she said that she does this a lot with her, you know, clients, you know, through Zoom, and she has not had anybody else have te technical difficulties. Um, Jocelyn does not have a job. She's mentioned to me that she is looking, but she has not received or, you know, told me that she's gotten a job. Uh, she does rely on government help. Um, her, her mom helps her and an aunt helps her. Okay, I saw that there'd been an approved home study on a maternal relative. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, and um, the child has been placed there, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, and is that that going well? Yes, ma'am. Um, every time I talk to Tina and Sandy, they love Celine. She's adjusted very well there. Um, she's up to date on all her medical and dental. All right. Um, and his mom had uh, the new baby? Yes. And how is that going? Uh, good. Okay. The baby's with her, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So she's making progress on her services. Drug tests have been negative. Okay, what does she lack? Uh, the counseling and stable income. Okay, I know she had indicated she was going to wait till after the baby was born before she started working again. So let me just kick this in to Ms. Grant. What, can you give me an update? Um, Your Honor, I have not had an update from my client, so I would just um, ask that she um, respond directly to the court and give an update on her job search. Clerk needs to talk to me just a second. Okay, my apologies. All right. Um, Ms. Grant, I'm sorry. That's okay. Ms. Ms. Lopez, Ms. can you update the court regarding your job search and your therapy appointments, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. I have a um, in-person counseling session on the 15th. So that will be scheduled already, or it's already scheduled. Um, I barely turned in my application this morning. I haven't texted nobody because about everything going on this morning, apparently. But um, it's a local store here in town. Um, but other than that, that's really all, because I don't really want to go out of town, because I live like in a really small town at my apartment here. So I'm looking for something here in town. That way, if something were to happen, God forbid, I could just already be here in less than five minutes away. So other than that. Everything else and you, are, you understand that um, getting that stable employment is going to be important in completion of your services and that you should provide pay stubs uh, to your caseworker and your cost set as soon as you get your first paycheck from employment. Yes. And yes. um, what, yeah, when I had worked at United um, a couple months ago, I had trouble getting my pay stubs whenever I was, I think um, my caseworker right now was already my caseworker, I think. If not, it was another one. I already had three already, so I had okay. barely got my check stubs barely too. Or a few days ago, actually. Okay. Is that in-person therapy going to be better since you've been having technical difficulties? Um, would uh, In-person will will resolve those issues. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. Okay. And can, you, can, can you continue to do in-person? Should technical difficulties still be an issue? 
I could try to do more better in person because I did a couple on the phone, but I wasn't really going through. So I'd rather do it in person than having a problem again and not being able to finish everything else. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to tell the court that the court needs to know? How's the new, th how's everything going with your new baby? Um, it's going good. He's actually right here. He barely fell asleep. Um, everything's going good. Um, Celine loves him. She acts like he's, or she's his like own baby. So, um, he's adjusting pretty good. He's sick right now. So he's kind of a grouch a little. Um, other than that, everything's going pretty good. I'd say. I think, I don't think anything else that I need to see, I guess. Okay. You're okay. Did you get that, Miss Taylor? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just ask if we had any, this is probably a question then for the department, if we had any uh, contact with the father yet. No, ma'am, we have not. Okay. Miss Lopez, do you have any locating information or contact information for him? I have not talked to him since I'd say when I was a couple months pregnant. I, he's never been a part of Celine's life. He's never even met her, honestly. Um, I haven't spoke to him. He never really texts me. I don't really have anything like, you know, I don't have him on any social media to even ask him about our daughter. Um, that's Do you really have any honest. answers where he lives? I don't. Um, last I've heard, um, whenever April was my case order, the first one, um, his other baby mother, um, had actually reached out to me and at the time they lived in El Paso, but now I have no idea where they are at this moment. I have not spoke to either or, so I don't really, you know, know anything about him, but I do know, um, even whenever I was with him, he, he was always moving place to place, wasn't really stable, I should say. So uh, as far as that, I have no idea where he is or okay. like anything. All right. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Shaw, anything to add today? No, Your Honor. Okay, and Ms. Edwin. Your Honor, I don't have any concerns with the placement. I think she's doing well. Growing. Okay. Casa. No concerns, Judge. Okay, then um, I will find that uh, there would be a in danger to send Celine home today uh, until mom gets a little more stable, um, especially in light of her carrying a new baby right now. Um, I think we need to see that financial stability uh, with Bob. And of course, we want her to complete counseling. So hopefully that, that will begin and she can get through that. Um, I will continue the department as temporary manager conservator and I will continue uh, Celine's current placement. And uh, we will uh, be back March 13th of 2024 for our final hearing. So, um, Ms. Lopez, it's just really, really important that between now and, the, and March that you get as much of this counseling done as you can and that you, you know, find a job. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I'll see everybody back for the final in March. Yeah, 103.92. Although Mr. Shaw has told me that he's in another hearing this morning, so he's trying to go back and forth. He is in agreement, I think, or not opposed, um, but I would prefer to wait for him to announce that. Okay. We can give him a few minutes. Um, so my understanding is Ms. Grant's client is not going to be present. Is that correct? Um, that's correct, Judge. Okay, and Ms. Sapien, Mr. Terman, any contact with either of your clients? No, Your Honor. No, Judge. Okay. Um, so, Ms. Sass, right now, I don't have anybody for you to interpret, but um, okay. I, I think we're going to need you for our 1030 case, correct? So. Okay. I, I could just stay on and just mute myself. And yeah, that'd be yeah, fine. Okay, when you're ready. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you want me to call these as companions or you want me to just call, you want me to call these separately? Let's call them separately, Your Honor. Okay, right. okay so we're here set for our final in this case. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. 
and uh, we're live streaming. Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Pamela Ferguson, Regional Attorney representing the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present and ready with Permanency Specialist Becky Hernandez and Supervisor Dakota Miller from St. Francis Ministries. And I also have a quick motion to make before we get started. Stacey Grant, on behalf of Encarnacion and Judge, as previously announced, she is en route to Lubbock and is not present at this time. Bailey Safety, on behalf of Maria Ortiz, I'm present and ready, Your Honor. My client is not. Um, go ahead, Ron. Uh, thanks. Ryan Terman, on behalf of Thomas Cyprian Castro, present and ready. My client is uh, currently in Guatemala and is not, not in attendance. Brooks Barfield, I'm also uh, attorney ad litem for Encarnacion, uh, present and ready. Okay, Ms. Grant, did we get you? Okay. We did, Judge. Okay, very good. All right, then. Um, uh, Ms. Ferguson, if you want to either tell me what the announcement is or make your motion or whatever we need to do first. Um, Your Honor, before we get started, the department wanted to make a motion to abandon all termination grounds against the parents. Um, the department is seeking to go forward today um, and ask for permanent managing conservatorship of Encarnacion to the department but we are not seeking termination of the parents' rights. Okay. And, and we don't have an agreement. We will need to put on some testimony. Okay, and I assume that uh, Ms. Sapien and Mr. Terman, that that's agreeable to the two of you. Uh, certainly no objection to the department abandoning their termination grounds. No objection from me either. No objection. No objection from the mother. All right, then. Um, who's your first witness? The department calls uh, Becky Hernandez. All right, you may proceed. Please state your name for the record. Becky Hernandez. And how are you employed? I'm the permanency specialist, a uh, caseworker for Encarnacion. And um, what happened that brought Encarnacion in, into the care of the department? On June 21st, 2022, her and Domingo Mulu, the father, got into a dispute where she ended up stabbing father in the arm and he had to get um, nine staples. Um, it was due to an altercation of, I guess, spanking of the children. And and also, how did that lead? So we're on Encarnacion's case. How did that lead to her coming into the care of the department? Her, I guess, her abandonment, her dad, just physical neglect, um, not watching her, leaving her stay with a bunch of men because it was Domingo, her, his brother, and in that house, and other workers, and and mom, which is never in the picture. And um, when when Encarnacion first came in into the care of the department, did she express that she hadn't had a safe place to stay? Yes, ma'am, she, she did. And um, during the course of this case, has the department made attempts to locate and speak with both Maria Ortiz and Thomas Ciprian, Castro Ciprian? Yes, ma'am. Um, so let's talk about mom, Ms. Ortiz. What contact has the department or has St. Francis made with Ms. Ortiz? At the beginning of the case, we did get a phone number. It was her son that we we're first communicating with, and then that's how we were able to try to complete the ICPC. She did provide a few addresses. Um, so I guess when the ICPC or they tried to complete the home study, none of the addresses were valid. And then from there, she kind of stopped communicating when we'll reach out to verify address. Um, if she can call me, she would never try to call me in person. Um, and then it just completely stopped and we haven't heard from her in months. Do you know about when the last time you had contact with her was? Oh man. Probably August, September. Okay. And did she have your contact information? Yes, ma'am. And had she been able to successfully contact you before that? Yes, uh, from the previous. Um, was she ever asked to, uh, in addition to the ICPC, was she asked to do um, services in this case? Yes, I did um, 
sent her referrals closer to Nebraska to go drug test and counseling. She did go drug test in June, just one time. Um, and then after that, that was the only service she probably did for me. Okay. Okay. Um, and in addition to that, through the ICPC process, she was asked to provide an address, meet with the ICPC facilitator, that kind of thing. Yes, ma'am. And it is fair to say she did not successfully complete that, correct? Correct. What about Mr. Um, I have his name as Castro Ciprian, but is it? Tomas uh, Ciprian. Tomas. Yeah. What, um, what, what services was he asked to complete? Um, he did participate in three parenting classes and three individual counseling sessions. Um, and then at he after that, he let me know that he was going back to Guatemala to go take care of his sick mom. And so all services were stopped. So um, did he express uh, any intention regarding Encarnacion when he left? He said as long as he knew that he was in, she was in good care, um, he was okay with it. He, he, he still calls me every month just to see how she's doing and Okay. But he has not asked for a home study in Guatemala or anything like that. No, he states he will not be returning back to the United States. Okay. Um, at this time, has either parent demonstrated that they can provide a safe and stable home for Encarnacion and her children? Uh, no, they have not proved that. And um, is the department at this time asking um, that the department be made permanent managing conservator of Encarnacion until she turns 18, which is in March, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What is the department's plan for her? We're hoping she stays in extended care with us so we can help her into the SIL program and that way she could be reunified with her children. And that way we um, she can have employment and be able to provide for her children and not just be thrown out there with another two extra kiddos to take care of. And um, along those lines regarding um, special immigrant juvenile status is the department specifically asking the court to make a finding today that she cannot be reunified with one or more of her parents. Correct. And um, if the court does make that finding, will the department, is the department's plan to follow up to apply for special immigrant juvenile status for Encarnacion? Yes, ma'am. Um, if she stays in extended care, what opportunities are available to her? Um, she could apply for, uh, well, we could apply for the SIJS so she can get her social security and a work permit and be able to work to provide for herself and the kids. And also if she stays in extended care, will her placement be paid for? Her? Yes, and she can also get educational. Okay, and she might get educational assistance and also through that program when she eventually leaves, she might also get household assistance, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, is the department today asking for both parents, Ms. Maria Ortiz and Tomas uh, Cyprian Castro or Castro Cyprian, I'm not sure I've got it right, um, to be appointed possessory conservators? Correct. And at this time, due to the unstable nature of what we know about both parents' lifestyles, is the department asking for the court to just order zero in uh, child support and medical support? Correct. And at this time, um, has either parent had any visitation with Encarnacion? No, ma'am. So at this time, is the department asking to just leave visitation at the agreement of the parties? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and Encarnacion is going to turn 18 and will be in charge of, the, of of how often she talks to her parents in March, is that correct? Correct. Your, Your Honor, at this time I pass the witness. Okay, and no safe No questions, Judge. All right, Mr. Chairman? No questions. Farfield? I jumped the gun, I'm sorry. No questions. Great. No questions. All right, Ms. Ferguson, any other witnesses today? No, Your Honor, uh, at this time, um, the department rests. All right, thank you. 
All right, Ms. Sapien, anything to present today? No, Your Honor, I haven't had contact with my client and I do not have any witnesses, so I'll also rest and close. Okay, and Mr. Terman. Rest and close, Judge. Garfield, anything? We'll rest and close as well, Your Honor. All right, and Ms. Anything? No, Judge, rest and close. All right, then um, I would like to have a recommendation from both Mr. Land for Ms. Grant. So, Mr. Barfield, I'll let you go first. Do, do what, Judge? I just wanted a recommendation from you and from Ms. Grant. Oh, okay. Thank you, Judge. I just, it cut out a little bit. Your Honor, um, based on the unique circumstances of this case, I, I do believe that this is in the best interest of, of my client and, and, uh, and her interest. I believe that provides her the best uh, foot forward to succeed. Uh, given her young age, given her circumstances on how this case began, uh, I believe this provides her an opportunity to, uh, one, stay in the country legally and be able to, to ultimately um, um, be reunited so in the, with her, her children. So I'm asking the court to approve this agreement uh, on behalf of my client. All right. And Ms. Graham? Your Honor, I concur with Mr. Barfield's recommendation and in the interest of the um, of Incarnation's children as well. It's in the best interest of her and her two children that the request of the department be granted and that she be allowed to continue on the on a path of success that is in the best interest of her and her children. All right. Thank you. All right, at this time, then, I find that it is in the best interest of the child to uh, approve the uh, naming the department as permanent manager conservator of the child um, without termination of any parental rights, uh, that uh, there will be no child support or medical support ordered, um, no specific visitation ordered other than as agreed to between the department and the parents, um, I will make a finding that the child is unable to be reunified with uh, one or more parent um, and uh, that the department may proceed uh, seeking the uh, SJIS uh, assistance for the child. And uh, at this time, then I'll dismiss all court appointed attorneys from the case with the exception of Ms. Grant uh, and Mr. Barfield, who will remain as the child attorney and guardian ad litems. Okay. Um, I appreciate everybody. Thank you all very much. And um, I think that'll, that takes care of everything. Ms. Ferguson, anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you all very much. Appreciate your help with this. We are here today on our final. Uh, we are conducting this through Zoom under a final cause and agreement of the parties. We are live streaming and Ms. Taylor is making our record. Okay, we will go ahead and take it out. Pamela Ferguson, Regional Attorney representing the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I am present and ready with Permanency Specialist Becky Hernandez and Supervisor Dakota Miller. And I um, also have an have an, a quick motion to make before we get started. Brooks Barfield, attorney for incarceration. And, well, I butchered that. Present ready. Stacey Crant, guardian ad litem, present ready. Jim Shaw, attorney for the father. Delinda Ebling, ad litem for the children. And uh, Casa is also present with us today. Yes, Casa, President <laughs> Ashley, and Beverly Schulte. All right. Okay, Ms. Ferguson. Um, Your Honor, I would first make a quick motion. Um, the department is asking to abandon all of termination grounds that it has against Encarnacion Castro and Domingo Malul Ramos. No objection. No objection. No objection. No objection. No objection. Okay, great. Thank you. And then, Your Honor, I also um, uh, have an agreement to announce. Okay. Um, 
the parties are in agreement for the department to take PMC of Isabel and Eugenia um, at this time. The department, due to um, the situations that we know about the parents, the department is not asking for any child support or medical support at this time from either parent. Um, and we are also asking, um, uh, the department already has visitation set up with Incarn between Encarnacion and her children as we work towards reunification and the department is asking to continue that visitation as it's been going. And um, it, the department believes that Mr. Domingo uh, Mulul Ramos is in Guatemala now. Um, and at this time, the department is not setting up any visitation because he not, has not been in contact with the department. Um, and the department um, at this time is asking for both parents to be um, a possessory conservator and the department to remain or to continue as permanent managing conservator. All right, so naming both parents as possessory? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, all right, Ms. Grant, is that your agreement? It is, Your Honor. It's in the best interest. Also your client's agreement? Yes, Your Honor. And um, as announced in a previous case, my client is not present, but en route to Lubbock. All right. And Mr. Barfield is the guardian ad litem. Also, your agreement. Correct, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Shaw. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I would agree also. Uh, if my client does reappear, then he has the option to come in and ask for a month. Uh, this is just that kind of a morning. I can get uh, try to do a modification if his uh, he changes his mind, but I think this is in his best interest at this time. Thomas Castro Cyprian is not present today. Uh, I want to take that up in a minute. Um, okay, and Miss Ebling. I'm not opposed. Children's placement is very good. The children are, are doing very, very well there. And it's my understanding that as we work through this process, that it will be slow, uh, carefully done. And with that understanding, uh, I'm not opposed to the agreement today. And uh, Casa, any concerns? No concerns. It's long, uh, I like that it's slowed down. I like that everything's being watched over. Uh, the kids are doing great where they are, and uh, uh, I'm in agreement with today's decision. Okay. All right. With regards to Mr. Cyprian, we have custodian. Um, I, this time I'm going to dismiss him from the case and from any legal uh, he may have had to uh, the children. Or, well, it's really, it was just to the. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I'm and sorry. I forgot to ask the judge, department. Would... Can you hear me? I'm sorry, Judge, you were cutting out for me a little bit. Can you say that again? Yeah. With respect to Mr. Castro Cyprian, we had him pled in as a non-relative custodian of the children uh, miss whatever if any legal relationship he may have had at this time so that he would no longer be in the case yes runner the department would ask that he be dismissed as next friend um and given that mom has already been appointed um, and they have participated throughout this case for a guardian ad litem. The department doesn't believe that she needs a next friend at this time. Okay, right. All right, so he will be dismissed. Uh, I'll approve the agreement, find it is in the best interest of the children to name the Department of Protective Services as a permanent managing conservator. I will name parents uh, as possessory conservators, um, no child support or medical support to be paid by either parent Visitation with the mother will continue as we currently have it set up. And then obviously as we begin, you know, reunification, we will we'll address that and adjust that as appropriate. 
Um, okay, then, uh, like I said, dismiss Mr. Cyprian, and I think that takes care of us. Uh, Casa, do you all wish to remain in the case? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Okay, I would be delighted to have you stay in the case, so thank you very much. All other uh, court-appointed attorneys would be dismissed from the case with the exception of Ms. Ebling and Mr. Field, um, the attorney and guardian ad litem for uh, Ms. Castro un until she obviously reaches the age of majority. Um, so we've got a little bit longer with that, so I'll leave you two in this until then. Okay, um, anybody have anything further? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, all right. Appreciate y'all getting all this resolved. And uh, for those still didn't denounce it in the other case either, but on, on both of these will be on May 8th of 2024, and that'll be on a nine o'clock docket. So I know I know Ms. Sapien and Mr. Terman are still in the wings, so I, I failed to announce that uh, with the other case. So they'll both be on that date and at, on that docket time. All right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Judge. Have a good day. Thank you. You all too. We're here set for our final. We are conducting this through Zoom under finding of good cause and agreement of parties. Uh, we are live streaming and Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements, and then we need to take up Mr. Pertle's motion. I'm Pamela Ferguson, regional attorney representing the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present and ready with permanency specialist Abigail Lawrence and supervisor Gina Simpson from St. Francis Ministries. Bailey Sapien on behalf of Father Omicard Chingo Mendez. I'm present ready to proceed, Your Honor. I have not had any contact with my client, and I'm not expecting him to be here today. Monica Olivas with CASA, present and ready. Still in Devlin, had a lot of children, present ready. Ryan Turman, attorney for unknown father, present ready. Judge Tim Pertle for the mother, Manuela Hamon Castro. Um, and I filed a motion for continuance, Judge, that you said we'd discuss. Yeah. Um, did Mr. Barfield announce? Where did Mr. Barfield go? Your Honor, he wasn't in the breakout room either, so... Our Brooks was supposed to be here? Yep, he represents Diego Himon. I can text him real quick. Yeah. Your Honor, can I have a quick breakout room with Mr. Pertle? Sure. Um, I think that the parties have reached kind of an agreement as to his motion. Um, you know, we understand that Ms. Simon Castro can't be present today due to the fact that she is in transit. There is an expectation that she may possibly be being deported and could participate soon. Um, but obviously, we need to commence the hearing today. Um, so the department would make a counter motion to commence the hearing and uh, then recess it to a time when uh, Ms. Simon Castro would have an opportunity to be present. Okay, Mr. Pertle, have you, let me just ask, have you been in contact with her? Judge, we were in contact as of last week, and I knew that there was a chance or a good chance she was going to be released from prison Friday. Well, in fact, she was released either Friday or Saturday. She didn't keep her, we had appointments for her to call so we could talk about this hearing Monday and Tuesday. When we didn't get the telephone calls, I figured that she'd been picked up by ICE. And it's literally up to the minute uh, situation because this morning she calls at 1025. Uh, from an ice hold facility in Louisiana and only had 10 minutes to talk. So I told my staff to get as much detail um, and I talked to her before I could get on the Zoom. So she is an ice hold in, in Louisiana. So we. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Let me. Um... 
Let me just have a quick conference with attorneys. Okay. We'll get started with our first witness. Um, I, I just for the record, um, we're going to have to call this case today. We, we've called it. We're going to take a uh, little bit of testimony. Mr. Pirtle's client is unavailable to attend. She's been transferred from Federal Bureau of Prisons to an ICE detention facility. My understanding is she made contact with Mr. Pirtle's office this morning. She's in Louisiana, uh, but she had a very limited amount of time that she could be on the phone with him. Um, so she wants to participate, and, and obviously we'll have to uh, reset so that Mr. Pirtle can arrange for her to be available uh, to participate. Um, we are up against our dismissal date, which is January 20th of this year. So we don't really have any other options but to do this as a call and recess. We will need to resume this within 90 days. Um, I show our next date here, and Ms. Katie, correct me if I'm wrong, March 13th. Is that correct? Yes, Judge, that's correct. Okay. Is everybody good on March 13th? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, this is for attorneys. You guys know how difficult this is to get this set up with with her being in an ICE detention facility. And obviously we've got to have Miss Sass back, which, you know, whenever she logs in and there's nothing for her to do, we still get charged for it, obviously. So if you get any settings that are gonna conflict with this, it's the same old deal. Please let us know ASAP so that I can make contact with whatever court that you're going to have a conflict with. This case will have to happen on that day. So, um, you know, I mean, it's just too many moving parts for us to just bump it, you know, and, and, and keep bumping it. So just, just know that if you get a conflict and another judge is not acting like they're going to let you out of it, please let me know so that I can deal with that. All right. Then, Ms. Ferguson, I'm going to allow you to call your first witness. We'll take some testimony. The department calls Abigail Lawrence. And how are you familiar with this? Um, I received this case in October of 2023. And where are um, Diego and Nathan currently placed? They are placed in a foster home in Lubbock, Texas. Okay. And um, what, just briefly, what brought them into the care of the department? Um, the reasoning for removal, mom was arrested on human trafficking charges, I believe. Um, at the time of the arrest, Nathan and Diego were left in the home with up to 17 strangers um, and no family was named at that time, so they came into care. Okay, and throughout um, the course of this case, has there been any uh, family that was appropriate for placement? No. Have you had any contact with any of the fathers? I have not. Um, has St. Has Francis the department? Um, well, let me scrap that. Um, where is mom currently that you know of? Um, as of today, I was made aware that she's in an ice holding facility in Louisiana. Okay. And when was she released from jail? Um, from what I saw this morning, it was the 5th of January that she was released. And um, she has made clear her intentions to participate in this case. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and so uh, at this time, we don't have any way to get in contact with her. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so at this time, is the department asking to recess this case so that she may be uh, present and participate in the case? Yes. Is that the department's last ditch reasonable efforts to allow her to participate in the final hearing? Yes. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, I uh, pass the witness. Okay. Well, we're going to recess at this point in time. Um, obviously, you'll be wanting to probably recall her before we, before any cross-examination is done. So we'll just stop here and I'll see everybody back March 13th of 2024.
Ms. Pirtle, if you have any issues or problems with that, setting that up, stay in contact with Ms. Katie so we know what's going on. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If anybody Thanks. has a line on my client, it would be swell for me to know. Just shoot me an email. <laughs> swell. It'd be nice, Love wouldn't it? And it? Love that word. It reminds me of the cleavers. Hey, it's spell, uh, Brooksy. I'm very wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If we're off the record, Mr. Pertle, if you could clarify the name of Diego's father, that would also be swell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll all be... you little Eddie Haskells. Good. 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 Making a record this afternoon. All right, we'll go ahead and take everybody's announcements. Pamela Ferguson, regional attorney representing the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present and ready with. Um, with caseworker Gia Hamilton and supervisor Mel Ayala from the department is also on uh, on the phone with me. Um, and I'm also present and ready with uh, the family intervention specialist, Chelsea Branch from St. Francis Ministries. Bailey Sapien on behalf of mom, Hannah Mason. My client is present and we're ready to proceed. Garfield for Mr. Adcock. All right, and Casey Grant, your honor, and I'm present ready. Uh, Ms. Mason, is Mr. Adcock present with you? Oh, I'm sorry, and then you're muted now, so you'll have to unmute. He's not present with me right now. Okay. All right. And, Your Honor, he contacted my office uh, well earlier this morning. You know where I was. Uh, I tried to call him a couple of times um, and voicemail. So. Okay. So I know he tried to get in contact with me. <laughs> But <laughs> sorry. Okay. All right then. So let's get an update uh, from the department on how parents are doing. I've read the court report and it looks like we're making some good progress. I agree, Judge. They are making good progress. Um, the only little hiccup we've had is um, Andrew did have um, a little bit of a relapse. He did test positive for methamphetamine back in November. And then on 12-29, I did, uh, was able to pull up that drug test yesterday and he did test positive for marijuana. However, it was on the lower side. Um, I've been in contact with Richard Gow. Gatlin, the counselor today. Uh, Mr. Gatlin has been working very hard with both family members on a relapse prevention plan. Um, he says it's going well. He's going to continue to work with that on them. Um, Drew mentioned to me that um, he relapsed due to peer pressure. So um, next time I see him, I'll be getting him some peer pressure handouts to kind of go over with him. Um, they have very attentive. Um, they have met all their sessions with Mr. Gatlin. Um, I think dad missed one drug test because he was sick. They're compliant on drug tests. Um, they're compliant with St. Francis. Um, I, you know, I think we can get this case closed maybe a month and a half, just get that relapse prevention plan figured out and just monitor them for a little bit longer. Um, like I said, they are in the TFF program. They are participating in that. Um, the first of December, they had just finished level three and then December 15th, they're back, back, back down to stage or phase two. Do. Um, and I'll let St. Francis speak on why that happened. But other than that, I'm very pleased. You saw a little cutie, little Sandra in the background behind mom's head picking out. The kids are very happy, very healthy. I have no concerns with the kids at all at this time. Okay. Great. Okay. And then Ms. Ferguson, update from anyone else? Um, yes, Your Honor. I would ask Chelsea Branch to give an update regarding the TFF program. Yes. So, Your Honor, when I took over this case, they just had a few things left to finish up in the second phase, and they have now completed that, and we are good to go moving into the third phase, and they're doing great, attentive, participating. We keep all our sessions, so all is going well on our end. Okay. Judge, I have a question for Ms. Branch. Sure. That moving back to phase two, Ms. Branch, was that um, an issue due to the previous um, support family um, support worker or was that my client's issue it was not your clients it was just some missing items that needed to be completed before moving to the next phase yeah okay and so now but, uh, they will be required to repeat phase three they hadn't gotten very far into it so we are now into phase three and what they have done still stands okay and do you agree with miss hamilton that it will take about a month and a half to finish those 
I think so far as what I see, yeah. Okay, thank they you. Are doing great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our just, and, and then I'll get around to everybody, but our dismissal date on this is February 19th, which is less than, or a little less than a month and a half away. Do we think we'll make that target date or are we going to be talking about a very short extension at that point? Your Honor, we would ask, uh, Mel, okay, I'll let Mel address it. Mel, they can hear you. I, I would. I think we can probably um, hopefully have everything addressed beforehand. I mean, there's there's just no way to know, especially if he keeps testing positive. I mean, okay, sure. Well, we we have we've got another compliance hearing scheduled for March thirteenth, and so you know, as we get close to those dates, then I guess we'll we'll look and see where we're at. What we need we'll do what we need to do well your honor at this time i guess i would make a motion to extend it so that we can get to the compliance the next compliance hearing set on march 13th okay that, that, that'd work for me Joe. i mean we're obviously previously this morning we're coming back on other matters the 13th anyway so that, that would probably be i have no opposition to that okay well we'll go ahead and i'll just grant the extension now and then we won't have to worry about that as it gets closer to February 19th. So, um, you know, that gives us plenty of time and we'll just keep the keep the target in sight and hopefully that will work out. All right, Ms. Sapien, anything else to report today? No, Your Honor. Okay. And Mr. Barfield? No, Your Honor. All right. And Ms. Grant? Your Honor, I agree with the extension. I know the court's already granted it. I, I agree with that move for March 13th. Um, not that the parents aren't doing well. They are. The kids are doing exceptionally well also. Um, I'm not overly panicked about the hair follicle that came back other than the levels to it, as it could have been taken off of a different place on the head. Something to that effect. We have had consistent negative UAs, which is a good thing. And so I think March 13th will also positively get us back to a negative hair follicle, which I would love to see before ending the case. But I expect that to be to, to be the case. And and they're doing exceptionally well in their counseling. And I think the mother in particular has um, been exceptional in this case. And I really commend her on her efforts. Um, I, I haven't had as much um, contact with or reports about dad. So I'm not saying negative about dad. Just feel like I wanted to tell mom how good she's doing while she's here to hear that. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm very pleased with the progress we've made and it's, and I appreciate everybody's hard work. Um, Ms. Ferguson, do you know what the new dismissal date will be? Um, no, Your Honor. I assume it'll be 180 days from today. Um, but I don't have my calculator. <laughs> okay. I don't either. I don't know if Ms. Katie's where she's got one or not. 180 days is July 8th. Okay. So July 8th of 2024 will be the new dismissal date. Not that it doesn't sound like anybody thinks we're going to still be doing this at that point in time, but um, that, that does give us, you know, plenty of time to try to get everything done. All right, then um, I'll, we'll just continue everything. I find that parents are in compliance and um, I'll see everybody back on March 13th of 2024. And that's a one o'clock docket. And I'm going to wave at the little one in the background. I apologize for my client drinking during court, Judge. She just can't be stopped. <laughs> She's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> She has a Paw Patrol little cup that she wanted to show y'all. <laughs> well, she can show it to us. Let's see that. Let's see that cup. Yeah. <laughs> can Stop you see it? us? Can you wave back to us? Say hi. There you are. <laughs> Say hi. That is a great cup. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody. Thank you all very much. And Ms. White, I appreciate you logging in. And uh, everybody have a great rest of your afternoon. And um, all yeah. I can say is uh, bundle up the next couple of days. I know. Hey, I, before you guys leave, I have a development on Jimon Castro. Oh, okay. So 
six is not available that day. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. All right. So unless we can find someone else, we're probably going to have to look at. She's in trial. She said that week, and I think the next week. Okay. Okay. So I don't really want to start trying to find somebody else. No. So we might have to do a special setting on a different day just for that one. So I'll start looking at dates. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Ms. Mason, you're free to go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.